Okay, great. Um, right, so my project, I thought it, it aligns more to the third goal of the sustainable development goals, but I've tried to make this presentation to show the impact that it could have on the um, on goal number 11. But I should have probably read your email in detail, Penny, so apologies for that. Um, okay. But yeah, my project overall aligns to the health and well-being, um, but with considerable impact to communities um, and the sustainability aspect of it. So I looked at improving partnerships across sectors and I focus on physical activity in Wales at a national level um, in different ways. So a little bit of intro, not that you need it, but to the sustainable development goals that they've been around since 2015 um, and they set out different goals um, that impact were taken on by different countries at different levels and um, you get a lot of, sort of media coverage about some goals but not so much about others and the impact indicators are sometimes quite vague. So it's up to national context and nations and countries to kind of take it upon themselves to translate the ambitious goals into a plan for action. So that was the topic of my PhD to kind of see how physical activity links to those ambitious goals for good health and well-being and how physical activity can be increased in Wales to contribute to health and well-being for now, but also long term to align with other policy that we have, um, like the Wellbeing of Future Generations Act and other acts that are relevant to active transport as well. And I looked at how cross-sector partnerships and speci specifically um, can be a strategic tool to engage different sectors and different partners, different levels even, um, into partnering up together and contributing to physical activity. Um, so physical activity could be sport, could be active travel, um, active transport, um, active living, so taking the stairs instead of a lift, so things like that. So modifying behavior um, as much as possible, but going from the big national changes that we can make to infrastructure, so introducing more parks, for example, to also community level interventions that we can do, um, like promoting materials on the street for people to have a go at getting active um, through gamification. So nowadays there's a lot about gamification of sport and physical activity, and there's lots of apps out there that get you engaged to go out and explore the woods in your area. For example, if you're in Wales um, or parks in a city, and so on and so forth. So my PhD started in September 2019 and the key partners were Public Health Wales, Sport Wales and Natural Resources Wales. Um, and I looked at the partnership between them, which was called the Wales Physical Activity Partnership. Um, and I used a systematic review in the beginning, which moved on to a case study. And then I did lots of exploratory elite interviews with stakeholders at different levels different expertise that were all interested in physical activity, but from different um, sectors and kind of areas and top areas. So some of them were, for example, um, promoting disability um, aware sport. So doing sport, delivering sports, but to specific populations that had specific needs that had to be acknowledged in that delivery. So looking at how cross-sector partnerships contribute to their agenda, but also to the overall um, policy and agenda in Wales and abroad. So Wales is doing really well um, in creating policy that ac ac acknowledges the Sustainable Development Goals 3 and 17. So the health and well-being one and the one about partnerships in action. We have a lot of policy that supports the way of working that is quite um, structured around COP production and engaging multiple levels. And we're a small country, so it really helps working in partnership with people that usually people have come across the stakeholders because they're in the same steering groups or they've worked together before. So it works really well. And we have a lot of supportive legislature around um, well-being as well. 
So currently, the strategy that I was mostly interested in my PhD was the healthy weight, healthy weight, so obesity um, and obesity strategy that is quite long term for, for 10 years. Um, and they said in that strategy that we will drive this with cross-government and partnership action. So, so far, there's been a lot of activities, programs that have been evaluated by government or local, regional, community level projects that have really allowed physical acti activity to flourish. And there's been a big program evaluated by Welsh government about um, physical activity delivery in different communities in Wales and how they tapped onto other outcomes that are not physical activity or health related. So I'll come to that in a, a bit later to link it, how our work in physical activity can link to communities and sustainability and all of that. Um, but in this slide, I just added a little bit about the goals three and 17. Um, so generally from the thesis, my main points quite quickly are going to be discussing, I'm still writing it now, but it is about discussing the ambitious goals and strategies that we get internationally or nationally um, that need to be translated at a local level, community level. So this is quite common. It's not just for physical activity and obesity. It's not a problem specific to those areas of interest. Um, so I assume that food um, and sustainable food production and things like that we've heard from the previous presentation come across the same struggle sometimes of translating the ambitious overarching policies and goals into the impact that they would have locally and how the stakeholders on a local community level can use those overarching goals to kind of help their work or access funding or in different ways have a local impact. Um, and then quite quickly, I've added some other targets of the SDGs um, that are not just from the SDG 11, but also some other ones that are linking into physical activity, but not in an obvious way. Um, for example, by 2030, it says target 11.2 is to provide access to a safe, affordable, accessible and sustainable transport system for all um, and some other bits to it. So physical activity in the physical activity agenda, nationally, cross-sector partnerships around the world have tackled active transport. But part of that is to develop transport systems um, to different degrees, depending on the infrastructure that already exists in a country. If there is completely no infrastructure in a transport system in place, then you start with the basics. Um, but in very advanced, let's say, cities that have a very good transport system. Um, we see people are more active. They use less their car and they walk more and they use public transport more. And there's better links to nature. For example, if someone wants to um, jump on a train from Cardiff and go to the Brecon Beacons, then how do we make this easier? How, how do we make it accessible to all communities um, to be able to do that and get to nature and the outdoors, for example, which is just one way to increase physical activity in the populations. Um, and then we have other targets like universal access to safe, inclusive, accessible, green and public spaces. So green areas and public spaces where people can just sit and lounge around with no additional cost um, out of their pocket. Um, that is always good for physical activity because people tend to walk to the nearest park and have a picnic or do other activities like that and use the green space. Um, so increasing physical activity by making an activity out of it um, that is not about sport. So it's more about active living, active lifestyle, um, commuting on foot rather than taking the car. And then I've added some other targets, but we can move on from that. And I hope I kept the time. Thank you, Diolch.